Hello and welcome to the Source One podcast. Consider us your source for the latest procurement, supply management, and strategic sourcing insights. Anytime, anywhere. So I guess to get started, if you could briefly describe how accounts payable functions within most organizations. You know, in the current environment today, what a lot of companies do is, you know, they're shuffling paper and accounts payable is usually the last group. You know, they end up getting the invoice after the order's been sent, after the product's been received, and then they have to deal with the discrepancies on the back end. So it's problematic in that environment. And what are some of the shortcomings of that typical approach? How how does keeping things on paper hold an organization back? It takes time. It's slow. It's manual. You don't gain the visibility. The suppliers don't gain the visibility as well. It's more of a reactionary type environment. Because of all that, it's slower. You lose discounts. It takes more time. We see companies that use our solution are five times more efficient than those without. So one of the things that struck me attending the webinar was that the way you discuss account payables potential, it's a lot like the way we discuss the hidden value that procurement has. And one of the overarching narratives that we like is the idea that, you know, procurement's evolving for sure and becoming more strategic, but it's still got a lot of obstacles in its way. Among them, the idea that procurement is really only there to cut costs. Would you say that there are similar misconceptions that are keeping people from embracing accounts payable and all of the potential? I do. I think there are. And I think a lot of companies look at the accounts payable department as a cost center. Therefore, it'll always be a cost center. But that's not true. The paradigm has shifted, and some of the leading companies have been able to turn that cost center into a profit center. Instead of causing an expense to the company, they're adding greater value. They're providing capabilities and visibility within the organization and doing it out of profit. So it's a dramatic shift. And what percentage of accounts payables potential value would you estimate most organizations are currently realizing? I would put the companies in different categories. I would say that the minority of companies fall into a best in class. They're achieving a dramatic 80 or 90 percent efficiency gain compared to the rest. Again, that's a minority. If you look at the middle of the road, most companies probably fall in the middle of the road or laggards. They're experiencing 50 to perhaps 20 percent of the efficiency that they could be uh, just because they're not taking advantage of the tools, techniques, the automation, or the processes available. If you had to generalize, what would you say characterizes those companies that have become best in class where accounts payable is concerned? Is it strong leadership? Is it generally an innovative attitude? I mean, what would you say those companies share? I think some of the commonalities that I've gone back and looked at many of the clients that have used our service over the years that have experienced best in class. It really does start with a strong champion, someone who leads the charge that that sees the vision because it, it takes someone who can navigate through the organization. Automating accounts payable is not just an accounting function. It starts with the order, it involves procurement, there's an IT component that's a necessary contributor, sometimes the executive team, the sourcing team, there's a whole group of teammates that participate those companies that have a champion that can take the groups and share with them the vision and show them the overall benefits, those are the ones that I've seen the most successful. It's a lot of hard work, but once it's done, it's dramatically different. And would you say that organizations generally recognize how closely AP interacts and should interact with other function, or is it sort of left off in a silo? I think it's the latter. I think it is kind of a silo, and I think it's an afterthought. I think at the end of the day, companies are focused on sales. They're growing the business. They're buying products that they need to fulfill their capabilities. At the end of the day, when the invoice comes in, that's an afterthought, and, okay, we'll get to that at the end of the process, when really it should be thought of as part of the strategic value. And so you've spoken to some of the shortcomings of a tactical approach to accounts payable. What are some of the enterprise-wide benefits a company can expect if they transform their approach to AP? Well, some of the benefits include, first of all, reduced cost. Number one, the cost to process an invoice today. I've seen companies process for a couple of dollars compared to 25 or 50. So it's a dramatic cost reduction. The visibility for the data, everybody needs the data to make better decisions. You become more proactive versus reactive. 
you can help the suppliers because they're gaining an accounts receivable side. We're focused on accounts payable automation, but what about the supplier? They gain the recipient, which for them happens to be an accounts receivable solution. The ability to process payments in a faster methodology allows you to take advantage of cash discounts if you'd like, gives you that option. Whether you want to or not, it's now within your control and it's a capability that exists. All the reporting capabilities, taking your line workers and moving them to knowledge workers so they can look at the data and study it and be proactive. Uh, so there's many, many benefits for those companies that have been able to reach best in class. So we spoke into uh, kind of the misconceptions about what AP is actually capable of. Would you say there's also a, a fear of committing to a sweeping initiative, that fear of the unknown? Would you say that plays a role uh, in, in keeping companies from transforming their accounts payable department? I do think so, yes. they Because they don't know, there's a concern for labor, there's a concern for the jobs, there's a concern for the future. Again, it's you're creating a better solution. So just like anything, if you come up with a better solution or methodology, that doesn't mean the jobs need to be eliminated. What it means is that you have a better utilization, and now you have a resource pool that can be uh, contributing to the organization in a much greater capacity. But the unknown is always a fear, yes. And um, how do you go about alleviating those fears and making clients believe in AP's potential? I think one of the things we've been able to do is we've been able to share case studies to show companies that very large blue chip clients who have virtually unlimited resources. So we've been able to show case studies to say, look, here are some of the brightest and best companies who have taken this initiative and they've gone through the journey and have successfully created an environment that's better for them, better for their suppliers, it saves them money, it provides all the benefits we talked about in a successful manner, and it's been one that's been proven over time. It's not something that they've participated and six months or a year later they've abandoned. They've been utilizing this capability and resources for many years. So if a company does commit to making these changes, where are they most likely to run into obstacles, and why might that be the case? I think some of the obstacles really are the internal education, making sure that the other areas within the business have the time and the commitment to the projects. I think where they'll run into the obstacles is the education and really helping the other divisions understand, and it always comes down to a matter of priorities. When you're dealing with multiple departments and this project is communicated and shared, each department has their own list of wish lists and things they want to do. So competing projects is always a challenge within any organization. We talk a lot about the importance of procurement, speaking to other units kind of in terms that apply directly to them and means for them. Would you say that's something accounts payable should strive to do, kind of learn to speak in a way that makes accounts payable seem like an essential partner for, say, marketing or procurement or IT? I think that would help their cause. I think if the vision was shared and articulated where AP is no longer just a cost center dealing with the paper on the back end, but it's viewed as a strategic weapon within the organizations, it will get, gain much greater tra traction. If you're a company that's processing accounts payable and it's costing you five times more to process an invoice than your competitor, you are at a disadvantage, right? right? So said the other way, if you can provide that capability and those efficiencies, you could be five times better than your competitor. That's that's enough to, I think, gain a lot of the executive's attention. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the obviously huge task of totally eliminating paper, you've cited uh, getting suppliers on board as a particularly challenging part of this process. Why do you think that is? Well, in general, it's a challenge because a lot of companies will go out and they'll come up with one or two methodologies and they'll try to force their suppliers to adopt. That's a difficult model. That's a difficult challenge. We have a better way. We try to meet the supplier where they are. So if you don't force the supplier and say, you have to send data through electronic data interchange, which may, may, they may not have the capability nor understand, or you force them to use a portal, or you force them to use the U.S. Post, or email, or fax, or whatever your methodology is. The best solutions, what we've seen, is when you can offer all those choices to the suppliers, educate them, explain the benefits, and then let them choose, because they they all use one of those methodologies today. 
so at the end of the day, if you're not forcing them for one particular methodology, but you give them a variety of choices, the enrollment for the suppliers becomes much easier, uh, it's much better, and the resistance model has been overcome. So if an organization runs into friction during this process, how, how do you typically recommend they go about addressing that and getting things back track? I think one of the ways to do that is to analyze the supplier base and try to preclude any of those objections in advance by recognizing that each of the suppliers are going to be a little different, not only in technology, but also in their spend, their volume, their their transactions. So try to tailor some of the solutions to the higher volume suppliers or technically enabled suppliers a little different than those that may not have those tools or the volume. Therefore, you're much more likely to target the offering to the supplier's capabilities and their mentality and their philosophy. You have a much better alignment and success in the program. And once one of these initiatives has taken place, how can an organization ensure that uh, alignment sticks, you know, AP and other functions keep working together? I think the best way is to get really the executive team leadership, whether that's your CFO or controller in your organization, maybe it's shared services, maybe it's sourcing, but if you can gain that visibility to the executive team and show the benefits for multiple areas, not just one particular function, but it affects several different divisions, once you gain that buy-in and the support, then it pretty much drives it down through the organizations and everybody knows that they're working towards a common goal with a meaningful and measurable objective. And are you optimistic about the future of AP automation? Uh, are there signs that more organizations are recognizing the department's potential? I really am, and I'll tell you the reason is because I've seen many companies take advantage of this, improve the capabilities, and achieve the nirvana of paperless. You know, the payment revolution that's out there, <clears throat> we're seeing companies embrace this and really eliminate all paper invoices, or eliminate all checks, it is 100% electronic. And many companies who have experienced that over years, other companies are seeing that and saying, hey, this really is a reality. It's not just something that we've used the word paperless for so many years. We're now experiencing and seeing the companies who have been able to attain that. Those companies have enjoyed the benefits of a five times greater savings, all the visibility, all the reporting. And what happens is, when clients look to those case studies and say, wow, this is real and it is happening, it's something that we want to take advantage of, more and more companies are seeing the capabilities and the options and they're embracing the solution. So it's, it's a very bright future and it's very encouraging. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you, Dan. My pleasure. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. You've been listening to the Source One Podcast. For more strategic sourcing and procurement insights every day, visit our blog, The Strategic Sorcerer. Want to provide feedback or suggest a topic for a future episode? Let us know at PR Request.